chairman and editor-in-chief, the great Steve Forbes. Steve, good to see you and Merry Christmas. You too, thank you. Um, obviously, they're going to still pay interest on this debt, but they're not going to pay late fees. Um, Joe Biden says this is going to create economic growth. Some might say this could cause inflation. What do you say? Uh, it's just going to cause trouble. Trouble. And, the, and, and, and they should not be surprised at all. I'm amazed 60 percent were able to make a payment uh, by mid-November, their October payment, uh, because when you go three years without having to make a payment, you, you, your, your payments adjust to other things. And so suddenly having this thing hit, no surprise, big problems. But, Steve, three and a half years was a $400 billion-plus bailout regardless of what the Absolutely. Biden wanted to do because the debt got inflated away, interest wasn't accruing. That being said, here's the, the sneaky Pete thing that Biden is doing. Uh, you don't, this is not going to be reported to the credit reporting agencies until late next year. So right around the time of election and borrowers would not actually default on these debts until the fall of 2025. That's how it works. So it's all set up so Biden doesn't, and the Democrats, all of them, don't feel any political heat from people not making the payments. And don't be surprised next summer if that September date gets passed to after November elections. You know, Steve, when I was in Congress, uh, uh, when the government took over uh, the student loan business, they said they were going to do this because they were going to make money to pay for Obamacare. And we all suspected that this was going to happen. This was going to be another giveaway. And sure enough, money is not going to Obamacare. It's going into the pockets of people who have paid too much money for an education they can't afford to pay back. And the real winners here are the, are the schools, are the universities, who are paying too much on the backs of the federal taxpayer uh, paying for these kids to go to their schools. Well, that gets the whole scandal of the thing. Uh, the cl- schools collect the money, and the kids are left holding the bag for it. Uh, most kids uh, don't even get through within four years. Many of them have struggled to get through in six years. So, and they also get an education, as you say, that may not be very applicable to the marketplace. But they're never told that when they take this thing on. And so the scandal is, why don't they reform the whole way they pay for education? In the name of helping students, they put them with many mortgages. And so uh, no more uh, grants, no more uh, loans and that kind of thing. And it's typical of government to say, gee, a business is making money on this. We can do it better and uh, use that money for wonderful things that politicians dream up. And so, uh, again, uh, if, if that kind of thing worked, the Soviet Union would have won the Cold War. Right. And, and <laughs> Cuba would be the Singapore of the Caribbean. And it just doesn't happen that way. Uh, my favorite quote about this whole thing is from the Undersecretary of Education, This is in a blog post. Some student loan borrowers are confused or overwhelmed by their options. And we want to make sure that they know that our top priority is to support student loan borrowers as they return to repayment so they get forbearance and aren't deemed delinquent if they even don't make one payment until late next year because they got four-year college degrees and they're so stupid that they can't figure out how to make a loan payment. Sorry, Steve. I don't mean to get upset. I want to get your reaction to (laughs) Biden. Well, well, somehow they know they're supposed to make payments on credit cards. (laughs) Everyone knows that one way or the other. And, And again, on this whole thing in terms of the cost of education, there's no reason why higher education should be going up at four times the rate of inflation that's done for 40 years. No of these elaborate Taj Mahals they've been building on campuses and the like. You look at the administrative bloat there. If you uh, cut that bloat in half, that would cut tuitions big time. Totally. So that let's go. Let's go Wake this. Forest, by the way, <laughs> where well, I went to school. Go let's ahead. let's pivot here because uh, President Joe Biden was in my home state of Wisconsin today, Milwaukee to be exact. Uh, he was further gaslighting the country on just how well his failed economic agenda has been working out. His particular speech was meant to be seen as a pitch to black voters in a must-win state, Wisconsin. For the old man, the president contending that Bidenomics has led to a black small business boom. We're doing it by building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. Not a whole lot trickled down on my dad's kitchen table in the top down economy. But when you mill from the middle, when you increase the middle class, the poor have a shot and the wealthy still do very well. 
the middle class does well, and we all do well. That's what we call Bidenomics. Well, let's be honest. The only boom Bidenomics has caused is the sound of Biden's poll numbers crashing into the basement. A new survey released last week found that just 63% of black Americans would vote for Biden, a 30-point drop since 2020. So, um, Steve, I, I don't know how long Joe Biden and his team are going to continue on with Bidenomics selling the economy to the American people and African-American voters, but it's not working. Well, in normal times, this would be grist for the comedian mill, but uh, right. that's been killed by the cancel culture. And in terms of uh, Bidenomics, it's going to be a laughing line in the campaign in 2024. And that's one reason why he's not going to be the Democratic Party nominee mm. uh, with, a, with, with, with a record like that, telling, insulting people. You don't know how good you have it. And people go to the supermarket. They pay those health care bills. They look at the education costs. Remember, Barack Obama said you not only could keep your doctor, but your health care costs are going to go down. Well, what happened to that? Well, the only way we buy the whole thing on Biden and Obama, the only reason those, that health care plan is still around is massive subsidies from the government. They haven't solved the problem of health care at all, which ultimately let the, care, let the patients control the money, just as in education, let the parents control the money. Big things can happen that way. Good things. Good things, Steve Forbes. By the way, great Christmas great try. Tie by the Merry way. Christmas, <laughs> Christmas, Mr. Forbes. We appreciate it, Mr. Forbes. We, we All right. love Christmas. Yeah. We do love Christmas. We do too. It's a great time of year.